Good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to the dedication of the College Hill Library in the name of a Hillsborough County icon and leader, C. Blythe Andrews, Jr. On a letter sent to Hillsborough County in February of 1988, Mr. Andrews strongly advocated for the creation of a library that would be crucial to providing information and enhancing personal growth in the College Hill community. Mr. Andrews was instrumental in acquiring the land where this library stands. The Andrews family has donated many book collections through the years, and Ms. Andrews volunteers here every week. Though our community lost so very much in his passing, his legacy will live on through this library for generations to come. I'm proud and honored today to have come to know this man. I, I remember when I first came to Tampa at 26 years old as a young man, and the name of C. Blythe Andrews rung strong. And uh, I was told that he is the, the person in this community you want to see. And I can remember as a young man, you know, wanting to meet him. And you know how young people are sometimes. You, you meet somebody you look up to as a mentor, and you kind of feel a little tremble, a little afraid. But I want to tell you that was a common effect when I first met him, a gentle man with a gentle voice, one who recognized the fact that all of us are important and everybody is somebody and all of us should be respected and treated with dignity. And so today, it is my honor and my distinct pleasure to say to this family what a joy it is to come and rename this library and to have suggested that he will live on not only in the Florida Sentinel, he lives on in you and then his name ring loud throughout the city of Tampa. Those of us have had the opportunity to serve as elected officials with the hue of the color of my skin, those of us that are presently serving and those of us that those that have served, it's because of C. Blythe Andrews, because he had the Florida Sentinel Bulletin to write about how important it was to create single member districts when we had to run multi-counties to get elected. It was he that wrote about how important it was that we had single member districts to allow back in 1982 the first African American in this city to serve in the state legislature. How important it was that we have same member districts in the county commission and how important it was to have same member districts in the city council and the school board that we could have an equal playing field that some of us could elect it and serve on those boards. When no other papers would write about what we were saying as elected officials, C. Blythe Andrews and the Florida Sunday Bulletin spread our message to you as to what we were doing. Today's ceremony is especially meaningful because it is a symbol of the power of collaboration. The C. Blythe Andrews Jr. Public Library offers the sharing of the resources and in many ways brings generations together to share, to laugh, to grow, and to learn. Our libraries are a priceless collaboration that deserve to stand as a model for the value and strength of solid partnerships and what it can mean for a better Hillsborough County today and a richer, more vibrant community tomorrow. Like libraries, which serve as a beacon of knowledge and information to our community, Mr. Andrews served as a great beacon and shining bright light to our community, providing a wealth of knowledge and information to our community through the publication of the Florida Sentinel. It could happen. Mr. Andrews was a beautiful person who believed in the dream. And he believed that people could be more than their circumstances and worked an entire life to realize that dream. And we all enjoy today the opportunities we have because of people like Mr. Andrews and what he has left behind in his legacy. To his family, we say thank you for continuing that legacy. To those that helped make this library possible and the naming and the recognition here, we say thank you. The way you change your community, how we change ourselves, comes from the ability to study and to work hard. So I'm, I, it's great to see all these, all of us older individuals here in the library, but I'm looking forward to seeing this room filled with young people who get excited and galvanized by what they read who are inspired by a book that they pick up and they decide, I'm going to be, whether it's the next president of the United States, doctor, lawyer, whatever it might be, construction worker, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it from the information that I've gotten from this library and from the help and the inspiration of C. Bythe Andrews. But to say that to have a great man like that, he is really missed 
And I know you're going to miss him, but his family loved him, and he loved his family, his children, his grandchildren. And I know that this is going to still be a good community with him gone because the family is going to carry on his legacy. And like you say, the Florida Central Bulletin will never leave this community because we're going to be able to get it every Tuesday and every Friday because that's something we look forward to. And if you take that away from us, then we have to take something from you. So you don't want to take it from me. Well, one of the things, and when you got in conversations with him, it was very difficult to prove him wrong. And if you did prove him wrong, at least with me, when I was able to prove him wrong about something, he would act like some of the politicians. He would never admit that he was wrong. <laughs> But one thing he would do, you would have a lunch, a free lunch. That's the way you knew you had gotten the best of him and <laughs> it proved him wrong. But I just want to say, he was a friend of mine, and not only mine, he was a friend of this community. The family was a friend of this, is, a, is still a friend of this community. As Gwen says, we depend on the Florida Sentinel Bulletin. Council Chair Scott was the person who planted the seed. He called me for months saying, Kay, we need to name something after your dad. And I said, okay, I'm thinking about it. I talked to my mom, I talked to my brother, I called a couple of people and said, well, what can we name after dad? You know, Chairman Scott keeps calling, wanting to know. He even had his assistant, Belinda, call me a couple of times. So after he announced it in council meeting, Mayor Pam Aorio called me as well. And she said, okay, well, we want to name a street after Dad, but we just want to name a street right in front of the office. And I was like, mm, if you're not going to name the whole street, mm, I don't think so. You know, because Dad, Dad did everything all the way, never anything halfway. So I was like, okay, let, let me really think about what we want to do. So after, I don't know, you know how the Holy Spirit sometimes comes over you. And for whatever reason, I thought about the College Hill Library and I said, that's it. It represents who we are. It represents the written word. It represents the community. It's all about the community, and it would be a fitting honor for Dad. Now, some people say that's not big enough, but I say it's as big as it should be because it has impacted many lives over the span that it's been here, and it will impact lives over the next generations. Throughout life and, and being in, in the city of Tampa, I got a chance to meet C. Blyce personally. I actually used to sell him Cadillacs when you probably see some of the Cadillacs he drove around in Tampa. He was a hard guy to negotiate with, but I, I did enjoy it. I learned a lot negotiating with him, and he did come back on several occasions. I got a chance to meet his lovely wife and some of his family members. But on the other hand, I would like to say to you, this is a beautiful day. This is well deserved. And hopefully that we could be able to see a lot more better things that is happening in the same location. Uh, I can't say anything because people have talked about him when they were children and I, well, I can't go into all of that. Let me read a, the, the letter that he sent to the library dated uh, February 15th, 1988. The residents of the College Hill community are at a serious disadvantage. There is no library immediately available to which they have uh, access, especially after school hours. As in other communities, a library is crucial to providing information and enhancing personal growth and development. The residents of College Hill need the same kind of support mechanism. I strongly support the proposal of the Friends of the College Hill community to establish a library for this community. Now we will ask the family to unveil the 